Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. But if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today and it is then posted to our archives for you to watch later at your convenience. And I will show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our show archives. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to, for anyone to watch. So uh, please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, uh, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on Encompass Live. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries. So similar to your state library. Uh, so we provide services and training and resources and grants um, and databases and all sorts of things to all types of libraries in the state. So you'll find shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries. Uh, public, academic, K-12, uh, museums, archives, corrections, historical societies, uh, really it's anything and everything. Um, really our only criteria is it something to do with libraries. We have guest speakers that come on the show sometimes from across Nebraska, across the country. Um, um, we also have sometimes um, library commission staff do presentations. Um, and today we have sort of a mixture of that, I would say. <laughs> um, we have a guest speaker coming, um, joining us today, um, who is a former Library Commission employee. Yeah, um, joining us back. So, Catherine Brockmeyer, good morning, Catherine. Yes, good morning, Krista. Good to be here. Yeah. Um, it seems like I was really forever since I, since I did an Encompass Live presentation. I've been there, done that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I was really glad to have you come on and do this. Um, grants are a big thing um, that we're always you know, pushing out to our libraries and providing them as best as we can. Um, and I know um, a lot of people are very um, nervous about how to do it, um, how to do it successfully. And so I'm glad that you are here with your expertise and knowledge to um, tell us how to do that. So um, I'm going to hand it over to you to um, take it away. Great. Thank you. Um, and you can see my screen. Is that right, Krista? Yep, yep. Okay. Yep. So your, when your I when I when I good. proceed to the next screen, just let me know I did a good job. Okay. Um. Well, welcome everyone. Um. It's so great to see so many Nebraska libraries here. It's my understanding that we have various types of libraries, and we have some out-of-state libraries, and so that's fabulous. So glad you're here today. Glad that you could find Nebraska's uh, Library Commission's Encompass Live. It's a fab fabulous. Um, platform and come back again soon um, mm -hmm. for, for future ones as well. Um, if you could please write in the chat what kind of library you're with, um, because when you registered, we did get some email addresses. And so we did get some .edu's. Um, we got some others. But also when you write in the chat, please also mention um, whether or not you would be applying for if you're a city agency, um, mm -hmm. if you're an education, a school agency, um, if you would be applying on behalf of any kind of PTO um, or friends circle. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and, and put that in the chat and uh, Krista's going to monitor that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, share with us where you're from, what you're doing, what your uh, grant, I, you know, how your grant pro process might work. <laughs> So we'll use that in a little bit um, along the way, and I will stop uh, periodically and ask for questions, and please don't be shy. Um, we can also take more questions at the end, and you can also contact me privately at katherine.brockmeyer at gmail.com um, with follow-up questions as well. I'm happy to connect with you. All right, let's keep moving. So typically when I do a, a workshop, um, I give a pre and post survey because that's my background in survey research and methodology. So I want you to think a little bit before this session about how confident are you in your ability to prepare to write a grant. And I'm gonna take uh, some moments here and spend a bulk of my time talking about the process of preparing to write a grant. And then um, also I will give you some examples of what goes into a grant application. I'm going to move through them quite quickly um, because there's a lot of verbiage in each slide. 
but it's my understanding, is this right, uh, Krista, that these slides will be available to them at a later point that they can go back oh, and refer yes. to them? Yes, I should mention that. Yeah, um, yeah, um, Catherine, if you send me your slides, yep, we will post them up along with the show recording. Yes. Right. So, um, so, so definitely do, um, don't try and scribble down everything you see on the slides. You don't have to worry about that. Take your own notes if you want to highlight some things, but you will have the full slide deck available to you later. Um, and yes, and uh, someone's just commenting about um, the, the questions section is where you want to type in. Yes, it's the questions box. Yes. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for coming. Um, we're going to move um, slowly through the first startup phase, and then I'm going to again um, move quickly through some of the slides that you can refer to at a later date. Um, a lot of it I have gathered information online. Um, you can search by keyword into Google, and then I would do .org. Um, or dot um, gov um, for, as we're all librarians, we know what's best to search for online and the most reliable sources for information. Um, dot coms will give you information, but then if you want to access uh, a resource, sometimes you have to pay a fee to play. So. so the objectives today are basically to um, get you thinking about how to write a grant. And um, I do, um, I have had uh, the opportunity to provide this to uh, grassroots organizations. And so um, I don't know how much time we'll have here to connect with other community leaders and write a need statement or connect with other community leaders, um, for example, but we're gonna look at some of your needs and I will probably try to generate a need statement, a goal, an objective, and an outcome for you so that you have an idea of what my thought process is. So here's my grant consultation roadmap, um, and I'll, I'll zoom in on each section. Um, I just want you to know that when I work with clients, I don't know that they are prepared um, to spend the amount of time on um, the back end of work. There's a lot of back end work that goes before you actually log into a portal and complete a grant application. Mm -hmm. um, knowing that steps one and two are really, really important um, because they provide you with narratives that you can use over and over again, supporting documentation that you can use over and over again. So mm -hmm. the preparation to get to step three, which is the fun part for me, um, the grant uh, I'm sorry, step four, the grant writing process, which is the fun part for me. So steps one and two, you get together your information. Um, step three, you look for matches. And then step four is when you start the grant writing. So step one is igniting your passion. Um, this is where you look at your funding goals um, and you share information with each other. Um, you mobilize. Um, you get a really good understanding of the funding needs that you have and um, start to formulate some of the things that I'm going to talk about in a little while in terms of goal statements, um, objectives and outcomes, et cetera. But to, to really get started, um, it's really important to have your administration on board um, and to, uh, for them to understand um, in their budget if they were to have this income where their money would go. So the research that's involved um, is looking at your landscape around you, and that is in order to um, demonstrate need. So this is outside of your organization. So this is, it can also be a need that's happening in your community, that's happening in your users, um, et cetera. And what it's really important to do is um, for the need statement, your impact statement, your goal statement, um, to be able to demonstrate and show the funder um, what you're worth and why they should fund you. The grant seeking comes next, actually. So you really need to have um, a clear idea of what you're seeking funding for. So the igniting the passion and the research is really important to come up with all of that information ahead of time to make sure that you are a match with the funder's goals.
The grant writing itself is tedious and can be um, onerous or onerous. Um, and it's really good to crowd crowdsource that and have individuals um, work on different sections that know the different sections best. Um, typically, I use a working document that is uh, available in the cloud so that individuals can go in and edit various um, aspects and then um, upload to a grant portal or a grant form. Um, it varies by funder what kind of application, the format of the application that you fill out. And so having all of that already um, first during your Ignite Passion step and having all of that ready to go so that you can copy and paste and then check with word limit, character limit, um, et cetera, that is all ready to go. Um, don't forget this step, uh, realization and review. So if you get the funding, you will probably have to submit an evaluation report. And so it's really important when you go back into the grant writing, and we'll talk about this in a minute, is the evaluation plan. So you need to be prepared um, to have somebody who's going to write your evaluation report at the end. Um, they don't just write you a check and, and hope that you do your best. They want you to be good stewards of your funds. And so um, it's really important that you have somebody on board that can write your evaluation and your reports for you. Also, um, if you don't get funded, it's okay to contact the grants officer or whoever reviewed your application to learn a little bit about why you weren't successful. Um, this is a really good learning experience for you, and most of them are really happy to share with you um, why you didn't score well, or perhaps they say you actually weren't a fit with what they were saying. And then you can go back and look at what their goals were and, and decide here, I thought I was a match and I just didn't um, fit with what their priorities were, um, et cetera. And so it is important um, to close the loop so that you can go for the next grant. So making a funder match, um, there are various types of grant providers, types of proposals, their fields of interest, their geographic interests, their current priorities, the amount of funding, and also it's really good to look at their recent grants, oftentimes who they gave to recently and a short description of who they gave to. Um, and so we're going to look at a little bit of, of these sorts of things um, because it's just really important for you to capitalize on what little time you may have um, to find the right funder to apply for so that you're not spinning your wheels or wasting your time. So the types of proposals that they are um, looking for are for startup programs or projects, emergency funds, Capital campaigns, which is basically bricks and mortar um, equipment. So if you have a STEM programming, are you needing a 3D printer, um, et cetera? If you're going to provide conferences and seminars, basically that would be to pay the um, seminar presenter and perhaps um, the design of the curriculum and the amount of printing um, materials that you would need, rental for the space. General operating support is administration, basically. So um, some funders aren't so keen on funding for general operating expenses. That's basically like them writing a blank check for you to do um, lots of things that you need to do to prepare. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's really important to look at whether or not they fund for general operating support. Also, it's important to keep track of your in-kind gifts and their worth. So volunteer hours, number of volunteers, the number of hours that they put in. If um, you're receiving uh, in-kind donations, what their worth is and the kinds of uh, donations that you're receiving. Another type of proposal that's not listed on here is capacity building. And capacity building is um, helping your organization um, grow. So if you wanted to conduct strategic planning, for example, or a community needs assessment, for example, or you want to create a new position, um, that would be considered capacity building. And so um, you can also look for those. 
Um, does anyone have any questions so far? Um, if you have an example of what you're looking for, go ahead and put it in the chat. And then I think that um, Chris is going to monitor those and yep. we'll get to those in a second. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. If anybody does have any questions about this or any um, grants uh, you're thinking of applying for or um, projects you think you might do for a grant, um, you can put that in there. I think this is actually really important. I know we give out grants here at the Library Commission, as you know, Catherine, over, over the years. And um, I think that the first thing that unfortunately we end up sometimes having to deny is because they applied for something that's not eligible for that particular grant. Um, and so very important to read the information for the grant you're applying for to make sure it covers the thing you need to do. Um, that we have grant here at the Library Commission, our library improvement grants, which are funded by um, federal funded money, um, Library Service and Technology Act money from the Institute of Museum and Library Services. And it has some yeah, strict-ish um, requirements of what you can and can't um, use it for. Um, and uh, capital campaigns, which is like construction and, and adding new, you know, building a new library or adding a wing or something, rent, big renovations, um, you can't do things like that with it. And um, so it, it, we've had to, you know, tell people, no, you're going to have to find something else to do with the money or um, maybe this isn't the grant for you. <laughs> um, so definitely important to um, pay attention to the type of grant you're applying for. Um, we do have some uh, people answering your questions at the beginning. Um, about what kind of library they're from. Um, do you want me sure, to hold on? go ahead and throw those out there for me just a little okay. bit. Um, so the first one we have is um, someone is uh, says they are from a public library in Wisconsin and they're not confident at all in doing this. So <laughs> good to, that they're here. Okay, um, great then, to have you. Yeah, and then we have um, a public library director here from our Beaver City Public Library here in Nebraska who has uh, does have experience. Um, they're currently preparing to apply for the T-Mobile Small Community Grant to upgrade their computers. Um, they've applied for a, a small grant from Random House to provide books for their Christmas child project locally. And they did in the past get one of those Kreutz Bennett grants that we had here in Nebraska for a Kodak photo kiosk in their library. I remember that one. Um, we had um, here in Nebraska, there was a grant um, that was for libraries specifically with a population served of 3,000 or less. Um, and unfortunately, a couple of years ago, it wrapped up because it gave away all of its money. Um, after about 10 years, it finally, everything was given away, um, but did some great work for our small libraries. Um, and then we have one more, our Lyman Public Library. Um, <laughs> She says, I'm as far from you guys as you can get while still in Nebraska. Um, I've never written a grant, so thank you for this. So uh, we've got some a whole mixture of experienced people and um, newbies, I guess we'll say. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much for, for attending today, for coming from all across the country or regions. And one of the things that we want to talk about, and I'm not sure if it's on the next slide or not, so I'm not going to advance it, but um, a lot of times they will give to libraries and museums. So typically those are governmental agencies and so they will give to those. Um, sometimes they only give to nonprofit organizations. So if you are partnering with a nonprofit organization, they would be the primary applicant. And mm -hmm. so we can talk about that a little bit. You would be able to help them write the grant. Um, they would receive the funding, disperse the funding, um, et cetera. But it is a, it is really a great opportunity for libraries and museums. It's typically another category, and we'll get to that in just a second. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the organization categories when you're doing your grant research that they say they will fund um, health services. And also keep in, in mind that that means health equity. Um, health equity is improving your well-being, the well-being of the people that you are serving. So it's not just giving dental care or free shots or anything like that. It's also helping people with financial literacy, um, et cetera. And so um, I, you can almost also put that under health and services or human services. Um, fine and performing arts, if you are bringing in a speaker or a, uh, a performer, um, et cetera, if you're looking at applying to your local arts council or humanities council, um, et cetera, they are looking for fine and performing arts opportunities. Civic, a lot of libraries offer, you know, civic engagement programming. And um, religious is an organization, some of them will, um, 
will provide to religious organizations and some of them won't. Educational, if you're a .edu, um, you might look at the uh, educational organization categories. Scientific may not apply as much because you're not going to do research. Um, sports or recreation, let's say that you're bringing everybody together um, for a, a mobility exercise or you're doing books and movement, um, et cetera, for, for a, a kid's um, book club or a story hour, um, et cetera, that might apply. So here are all the fields of interest that you might look um, that funders say they will apply. Um, on the right hand column and down the right, there are a lot of there's a lot of uh, listings for youth, elderly, women, men, families at risk, minorities and low income. So what's really, really important is that when you're going back to your need statement, that you understand um, the, the demographics of the people that you are serving. You can get that from census data. Um, if you're looking at free and reduced lunches, you can get that information. Census data is really very helpful. Um, for smaller libraries, you may have to go with a community survey that's a five-year projection, and that's okay um, because they don't gather all the information except for the 10-year uh, census every, every 10 years. Um, but you can still um, gather information on the population that you choose to serve. Um, knowing the population that you already serve, it depends on whether or not you gather that data when they sign up for a library card, um, or if you conduct some sort of needs assessment and you ask people to respond to a survey and then you do ask demographics questions at that time. Um, you would just say that um, on your survey, these are used for reporting purposes only and would be aggregated with similar responses, just so they know they're not being um, singled out based off of their responses. So you would just aggregate the demographic information together so that um, the funder understands that here's who responded to my survey in general, you know, 15% of the population or 15% of the respondents were Hispanic, um, for example. Or if you can kind of capture that in another way, just be creative. So this is really important. The other considerations are what their current priorities are. Um, they, you might find something that says children and families, but then when you get um, in the weeds, you're going to see, no, they only want prenatal care. They only want to fund prenatal care. So you're not a good fit for that. Another consideration is how much they're going to fund. Um, typically for first time applicants um, and your first grants, it's really good to get some small wins. So it's really important to go for $5,000 grants, $2,000 grants, $10,000 grants. If you're a first time applicant um, for a larger grant or even for a smaller grant, it may behoove you to um, approach the funder, either they have a grants officer or a contact person, and just explain what you're looking for in funding and if you're a good match. That is well worth your while because you're not cold calling them just by submitting an application out of the blue, you're on their radar. And also it, uh, it also prevents you from wasting your time with a complicated grant application um, if you're truly not actually a fit. If they say, Actually, we don't fund um, libraries, even though it says so, you know, et cetera. Um, or we don't provide funding for operational expenses, even though on their website it does say they would fund some operational expenses, for example. Another great thing to do is to go to the foundation's website. Uh, typically, they will um, say what their recent grants awarded were. And oftentimes, they give a description of what the kind of grant it was. So if it does say to hire a program director, you're in the right place. Um, if it says to start a program, you're in the right place. If it says capital improvement to renovate uh, an office or office space, you're in the right place. If it says for technology upgrades, you're in the right space, et cetera. Um, another thing that you can do, and I'll get down to this in a little bit, is to actually go into their tax filing um, you can go into their 990, hopefully at the very end, if you scroll down, you will find out who they have awarded for. 
And sometimes in the second column, they will say what kind of support it was. So it'll say general operating support, program support, etc. So there's quite a bit of homework to do. Just keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. So when I did a training, I learned all the parts of the grant application. Um, not all of these are required in every grant application. Some of them are simpler, especially hopefully for the smaller grants, um, which like I said, is a good place to get your feet wet. But if you can project um, some of these and um, anticipate some of these by preparing these sections, then a lot of it is what I call boilerplate. So you have a narrative, you can basically copy and paste it into their application and then cater it and edit it to match their priorities. So for example, in the narrative, you would say, um, in, in alignment with your priority to serve uh, children in need or children in poverty, um, we do this, that, and the other. So it is important in your narratives to go ahead and go back and look at the funders, goals, and priorities. Now here's where I'm going to um, skip through quite a little bit. Um, a letter of inquiry is oftentimes um, just an introduction of your organization to an, a foundation. It's very brief. Um, it is uh, typically just one page. Oftentimes you write it up, save it as PDF and email it. Sometimes it's just an online form. Um, and then basically if they kind of like you, they'll nibble and they'll get back to you and invite you to submit a full proposal, which is mm -hmm. where the real work begins. <laughs> um, but a lot of times, here's the information that goes into a letter of inquiry. Please do know that there are some funders that you will find um, in your 990, um, your 990s of them, or as they say on their website, read carefully um, the fine print. Sometimes they say we're not ap uh, accepting applications at this time, but if you believe you would like to share your information with us, we're happy to hear from you. So read the fine print very carefully whether or not they're accepting applications. But if you really think that this is a relationship, especially a local relationship, um, that you think you could build with them over time and ask them to partner with you, um, et cetera, um, this is where either, either a phone call to the program officer or submitting the letter of inquiry is really worth your time. Sometimes there's a cover letter. Um, this is where you introduce your organization, assure the funder that the project has the support of your board of directors or your advisory board. Um, be specific, state what you're funding, what you're asking for and how much and for what. Not all of these, re not all applications require a cover letter. So the abstract executive sum summary, sometimes I write that last. Um, sometimes if I look at the application in advance and I see all of the details that they're asking for and all the complexity of the application, um, sometimes I go in and summarize all of those and write my narratives. And then I'm able to write my abstract and executive summary. I do want to know, want you to know, um, grant writers are turning to chat GPT. And there are pros and cons to using chat GPT. But if you um, would like to put in some details, there's a word limit length, but then you tell chat GPT to summarize this in so many words. Let's say you have a, a word limit of uh, 500 words or a word, a character limit of 2000 characters, et cetera. Mm -hmm. They might be able to whittle it down. Uh, what you get is, you know, it's basically like uh, what you get is what you put in. And so sometimes it's not catered to what you really need. And so you really need to look at it and um, modify it. Be sure you don't just copy and paste it. Make sure that it's accurate and that you can put in specific examples if you need to. So I think the grant providers are telling you to use it or is that just something that's uh, in, the, in the grant consulting world some of us are turning to chat gpt and okay. um it's it's awesome for um individuals who are not grant writers um you can ask you can give what your program is um for example and say what are some outcomes that would be achieved for children with disabilities for example and so they they call the web 
Um, and so you, you just have to be really careful. It's called, um, what's that called? Um, garbage in, garbage out, right? Yeah. So be yeah. careful what you put in and then uh, be careful with your results and really look at them carefully and go in, copy and paste and wordsmith to your best of your ability. Yeah, don't just take it as is. You definitely read it and, you know, put a human on top of whatever you've gathered um, right. to make it, yeah, before you actually use it. Another thing with chat GPT is you can, uh, after you get your results, you can put things like be persuasive or um, write this in a, from a personal tone, for example. So the introduction is to help establish your credibility as a grant applicant. So this talks about the history of your organization. Um, if it's a nonprofit, um, what your what date was your tax determination? So basically how long you've been in business um, and what sorts of things have you achieved? Um, so it's just really, really important for them to see that, um, for example, that your city trusts you to provide library services, that your patrons appreciate you, um, et cetera. And so, you might want, you can go longer than a sentence. Um, yes, definitely. I would go up to two paragraphs. Um, oftentimes this section is pretty short in most applications. Um, part of the introduction is then, oh, uh, let me go back for a second. So the introduction is if you have a mission statement, if you've done strategic planning and you have a mission and a vision and goals, um, some of that can actually just go into the introduction. But let's look at the next slide here real quickly. Yes, yes. So mission and vision and, and values would go into your introduction, actually. So this is what really grabs their attention. They know that you know who you are. They know that you understand who you are and that you've thought long and hard about it, um, et cetera. So if you have a tagline, um, et cetera, on your website, um, use that and expand upon it. Okay, now we'll go to the organizational background, actually. Um, it's a brief or, of overview um, of the organization. Again, you can include your mission or purpose, um, who benefits from your work, um, how many employees you have. Um, if you're looking for program, if you're looking for a program director, for example, or you're trying to create a new position, um, this is where part of it is where you would say that right now we're um, this person is not being funded. We don't have a position right now. This is being absorbed by other um, by other employees right now. So that's where you would put in your organizational background. If you're looking to bring in an author, an author tour presenter or something to that effect, just say, you know, we have people that provide story hours and that sort of thing. Um, and then we'll we'll. A lot of the times um, they'll ask for a, uh, some kind of organizational chart. Okay, so here's, here is a really sticky wicket. And I want you to keep me on time, Christia, Krista. But mm -hmm. the neat problem statement is not, we need to hire a program director. The need problem statement is um, we are at capacity and our current employees are unable to dedicate the time or we want to hire somebody who specializes in X, Y, and Z, and we don't have that right now. Or in our community, here is a need. So I worked with a capital improvement grant that uh, they didn't have a handicap ac access accessible um, elevator or restrooms. So you don't say our patrons need handicap access. You talk about people in general, what they benefit from or why it's difficult for them to access public buildings or access buildings that don't have handicap access or handicap accessible um, elevators, etc. So you talk in general about the problem and need statement in your environment. If you're um, organization has gone through a SWOT analysis. You can definitely look at that. Um, that is um, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. 
Um, outside the uh, environment is the um, opportunities and threats. And threats are where you would find your need problem statement. Um, also, strengths and weaknesses, you might be able to uh, gather some of that information from your weaknesses. So the need statement is actually, for example, I'm working with an organization right now that serves the homeless veterans. And so basically it's not, um, you know, we need to serve the homeless veterans. It is homeless veterans suffer from this, 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 and this. So um, they have a hard time holding a job, um, et cetera. And then if you are interested in providing financial literacy, that's where this will come up in just a little bit. Um, the need statement, again, um, put in facts and stories. Um, can anybody provide a real quick example of what they see as a need in their community that the library specifically would be able to address? Yeah, um, definitely. Um, Krista, see. if you can think of a few things. I mean, um, I mean, you provide... Um, you receive LSTA money, um, you provide uh, uh, funding to libraries for technology, is that right? Or communications, uh -huh. is that right? Yep. Uh, with either the um, library improvement grant um, or our youth grants for excellence, if it's something youth sent focused, um, could both be used for te um, technology, such as uh, computers, networking equipment, um, oh, we have other funding for that. Um, Sure. So what you would look for is some research on um, why people without computers are um, in deficit, for example, why people in small towns that don't have wireless um, wireless uh, or computer Internet uh, services, you know, they're without Internet services, there aren't enough coffee shops or they can't afford computers um, and they can't afford Internet access, et cetera. So it's real general. It's just real general. Did you have anybody chime in? Um, there was um, actually I did have a question that came up. Uh, well, well, there was one library that said they're applying to upgrade their computers. So definitely right. what we're talking about. Yeah, right. yeah, um, definitely. I wanted to know about um, getting new shelving in their library. Um, Sure, absolutely. That would be more of a capital campaign kind right. of um, a, a application. And that yeah. would have to do with navigability. So maybe you want your shelving to be, you want more shelving that is more accessible at a lower level for children who are shorter or for people with disabilities that can't reach that high, for yeah, example. I, or you want to or you want to widen um, your aisles so right. that people in wheelchairs can get through or people who have mo mobility issues. So mm -hmm. you want you want to get new shelving that um, better organizes your books um, so that you can use less fewer shelves um, that widen your aisles. Does and I bet this place is going to be doing something about that with accessibility because they actually expanded on it and said um, Mine were hand built probably in the 1960s and are in pretty sad shape. They definitely probably need updating. <laughs> sure, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and um, you can talk. You can talk a little bit about atmosphere and um, welcoming atmosphere. And if things are outdated, um, you might be able to get some impressions from some of your patrons that say, "So, what do you think about um, our library? Do you think it looks?" Um, up to date and savvy, or do you think it looks outdated, um, et cetera? And you would get some impressions from your from your library users. Yeah, and they specifically want to know. I think they said, "Would an improvement grant get me new shelving?" I assume you're talking about the library improvement grants we do here at the Library Commission. Um, and I would have to say it depends. Um, and if you right now, <clears throat> our grants for 2024 through the Nebraska Library Commission. This is just for Nebraska libraries. They've closed because they're being awarded right now, the funding, my funding has been sent out now, but in the fall, we'll open them up again for the 2025. Um, but specifically for library improvement grants, when it comes to construction, um, if they are freestanding shelves, meaning they're not like built into the walls, then yes, you could use our library improvement grant to get them. That is one of the um, uh, restrictions on LSTA funding is it can't be actually with, uh, permanently affixed to the library. Um, if it's something that's like a temporary sure, thing sure. that you as a librarian can like okay. screw in a, a, a you know, screw in your own 
the bookcase, you know, but um, if you're buying something that is freestanding or having something built that's freestanding, then yes. Um, otherwise, if you have, okay. if you want this more so, permanent, we right. would refer you to right. other construction mm -hmm. type grants. So it would depend on what your situation is. Yeah. Right. And that's kind of when talking to a, a grant program or a, a funding officer um, is a good idea because they might say, well, you can apply for a capital improvement grant, but it doesn't, it doesn't address, um, you can't use furniture, for example. Um, the other thing I want to, because we're running short on time, it's already um, 1043, I can't believe this. Um, right. Another thing I want you to think about with write a need statement. This is your sob story. This is it. This is your sob story. This is where people are um, struggling and or um, uh, are falling behind or um, et cetera. So this is where your sob story is. Um, also, it's really important to address urgency. So uh, if, if, it's a, if it's an application that they put out quarterly, you know, then, then, you know, you're waiting three, three months to, uh, to hit the next deadline, et cetera. Um, mm -hmm. If they're just in time grants, which means they're a rolling application and that, or, or they're a rolling application and you can apply at any time, you might talk about the urgency of the needs for your funding or the urgency of the needs of the people in your community. Um, so, so think about that too. Okay, so project description and methods. Again, this is back end work. Um, it's not, you know, we we want to we want to bring in an author for an author tour. It is, you know, what is the vision of our organization? What is the mission of our organization? What are our goals? So our goal is to introduce children to the love of reading through the presence of an author on an author tour. Um, example. Um, Etc. So it's not we want to hire an, we want to bring in an author for an author tour. It is um, more than that. And you can look through these a little bit. Your project description and methods. Um, also consider your inputs and your outputs. So how much time you're putting into it, how much money you you would be putting into it, whether it's grant funded or not. Um, and then your outputs are um, numbers basically. So the goal statement that I just addressed um, is broad, general, intangible, and sometimes abstract. Um, that's more of an impact statement, but a goal, uh, a goal can be broad. So like I just said, um, we want to ignite um, kids' passion for reading by bringing in an author who is gonna talk about their writing process or something to that effect. There are really good um, keywords to use, decrease, deliver, develop, establish, improve, increase, produce, and provide. Those are great uh, words. You'll get this all in the, in, the <laughs> in the handouts. So don't be taking furious notes here. Mm -hmm. So an objective is smart. Um, and it depends on the grant application and how complex it is. But if they're gonna ask for objectives, um, it's your steps toward accomplishing a goal, um, and they should be smart, smart objectives. You can Google this. There are so many resources out there on how to write a, a smart objective. Even write smart objectives, um, grant writing for public libraries, for example, and they may come up with some specific, uh, some, some, someone may be saying, here's how you write a smart objective, or here's what you, you might actually get some libraries um, grant applications that have been posted and you can see what they wrote. But they're specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time bound. Mm -hmm. So outcome statements are kind of touchy feely. Um, outputs are really easy. We had this many people attend we are planning for 100 people to attend um, this informational session, or we plan for um, 10 people to go through our financial literacy program, et cetera. So those are numbers, those are outputs. Um, an outcome statement, remember the question I asked you at the beginning of our presentation? How confident do you feel in your ability to prepare to write a grant? Um, mm -hmm. That is um, a knowledge, skill, or ability, and confidence questions are really, really important. And you, if you do a pre-survey, which is what you administer before your intervention, 
you would ask them that. They need to attach their name possibly. And then after the intervention, you give a post survey that says, now that you've participated in this, how confident are you? So um, there's some there's some navigating Excel and running some analysis and reporting, et cetera. Um, but if you're providing a financial literacy program or um, if you install new computers, you could um, you know, walk around the computer lab and just ask people for their general impressions. Have you noticed that we have new computers? How has that helped you, um, et cetera? And, um, and that, should, that should help you out with outcomes. The evaluation plan, this is needed for more complex grants. Um, it, it, for your evaluation plan, always in your narrative, you should always write, we will adhere to any uh, reporting requirements of your foundation, mm -hmm. of the funder. Um, you should always, always write that. We will adhere to any of the evaluation requirements or reporting requirements of your organization or of your foundation. It's really important for them to know um, that you are doing what's, that you are monitoring what you're doing. Is there money being used wisely? Are you being successful? What are your lessons learned? Um, so into your evaluation plan, um, you would write um, quite a bit of information, um, especially if you're going for a larger grant. So here's all the different kinds of what you can write into an evaluation plan. Um, you know what, you're gonna have to understand how much you can handle. So if you just need to keep it simple based off of the manpower or the woman power or the person power that you have, keep it simple. Budgets are really, really important. Sometimes they want your operational budget, so your annual budget, and then they also want a project budget. And so um, if you're looking at hiring someone, you need to put that, you need to put, you know, the, in a way that that's operational funding, but it's programming funding. So it's dedicated to your one program. Mm -hmm. And also with the budget, um, at least here, we need to know, um, for some of our grants, there's a match required. So do you have the budget to handle your part of the match? If the grant project is this much, you need to have 25% as a match. Where is that money coming from? Right. Exactly. And one other really important thing to do, and if they don't specify on the website, I would contact the grant officer, is whether they allow in-kind match. So you can go and um, Google, I'm sorry, I don't remember the website, but find out how much a volunteer hours volunteer amount per hour is worth. So you can search by Nebraska, you can search by Wisconsin. Um, in Nebraska, I think, I don't remember, it's $18 an hour. So if you have people that are providing 100 hours worth of um, free, free assistance, that is worth how much? And so that's considered in kind. Um, if you are receiving books, how much are they worth? Uh, you can look at fair market value um, and just estimate, for example, um, if people are donating equipment or et cetera, um, then you would estimate how much that is worth and put that as in-kind match. Another thing with budgets is they're going to want to know how much you, they might want to know line item breakout of what they're um, funding. So if you're asking for a $10,000 grant, you may have to break it down by um, personnel would be $5,000, equipment would be $2,000. Let's say that you're doing a maker space or something to that effect. Um, they may ask you to break it out just by them alone. Um, but sometimes in the grant narrative, you just say, we're, we're requesting $10,000 for this, this, and this. Um, our matches for other things or in addition to those things. How am I doing on time? Uh, we got about 10 minutes, but um, I will say um, we don't get cut off right at the top of the hour at 11 o'clock. Our show is officially an hour long, yes. Um, but if we still need to get through slides, we will make sure everything that um, Catherine has to present to us is here. And if anyone has questions, we'll make sure um, we get to them. Um, I do have some people that um, type some things in here. Where's the one here? Oh, go um, for it. Let's well, here's a right question hand. about something that we include, which I'll mention now in case, because I know if, if, if you all who are attendees um, in the audience have only allotted an 
an hour and need to take off right at 11, that's fine. We're recording the whole show. You can always watch the rest of it later. But I want to grab this question while the um, before we do get that hit that time. Um, they want to know, is it helpful to include photos of the equipment you're going to purchase or of the area you want to update? Uh, great question. Um, sometimes they allow um, additional uploads. And so basically you would create like a flyer or something to that effect with some information. Um, just saying, for example, if, you're, if you've got your space right now and it's in a sad state of disrepair, um, take a picture of it. Um, if you're looking for, uh, it doesn't have to be the exact furniture that you're hoping to purchase, but if you are budgeting for a certain amount, you might actually put some photos of, of what you hope to put in. Um, it's, uh, you can also write letters of support. Those individuals could include photos at the bottom of their letter because you would just save it as PDF and upload it. Um, sometimes when I write a letter of intent, if it has a, a two-page limit instead of a one-page limit, sometimes at the end I will write, a, a put in a little photo with a caption. So if it's a, a success story or it's a child in a wheelchair that's able to reach, you know, that's reaching up to grab a book or um, it's kids with special needs in your story hour. Um, you might want to get the backs of their heads, et cetera. But sure. um, yes, pictures tell a thousand words. Um, sometimes they do allow you to upload attachments. And so that's where a flyer would go or a before and after picture would go. Um, Without reaching out to the grants administrator or whoever's offering it saying, if I want to send more information, like here at the Library Commission, we have an online application form for our grants. Um, we don't ask for anything else as attachments, but if you do want to send something, yes, you'd email it to whichever one of us here is in charge of that particular grant. There's different people in charge. So, I mean, I know for ours, we would definitely appreciate if you do have, um, like, here is the here are the particular shelves, the shelving we want to purchase from Cornhusker State Industries and link to it or... Um, or here is our Amazon wish list of the things that would be part of this makerspace we're doing. Um, if, right, and, if, and but in there, in there, what's really important then, sorry to interject, but then what's really important is to go in and look at the reviews and copy and paste people's satisfaction with the with what they received. So I wouldn't just insert the pictures, I would also explain the pictures with a caption, um, et cetera. Yeah, so definitely, yes. Um, anything extra you can attach is definitely helpful. Um, just figure out if the best. If it's allowed, way. if it's allowed, read read the instructions very carefully. Mm -hmm. If they say do not send letters of support, then don't send a letter of support. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. So oh, I thought this was updated. Yeah, I'll remove this slide, the funding search resources. What slide is that? 31. This is old school. These are print guides um, back when they were available in libraries and you had to be really creative in how you culled through them. So these actually are not updated. I will remove that slide. Oh, yeah. So the funding search resources, um, Candid Foundation Directory, and if I were to put stars behind it, I would give it four stars out of four stars or five stars out of five stars. But if I were to do what you look at with restaurants on Yelp, um, I would give it five dollar signs. So it's very, 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 very pricey. And most small organizations are not going to be able to afford it. Um, the thing is, though, is that at one point in time, the University of Nebraska-Lincoln offered it as a database, and as long as you had a community user card, um, you could go in and um, access the database and do all everything that it had with the bells and whistles. They had the premier subscription, et cetera, um, and that sort of thing. So right here, it does say find us, and I do believe that it does show where in your state um, you might be able to access it. A lot of times it's by um, IP address. So you actually have to go to the physical um, location where with the computer that accesses it through the IP address. A lot of times you can't remote in. Um, I, I think UNO used to also have it, University of Nebraska, Omaha. But I think if you go to find us, you might be able to find um, where there would be free access to it. 
Um, if you're interested in looking at um, the price points and, and all of that good stuff, uh, the link is there. You can just go ahead and look at it. The next one, which I have moved to as a grant consultant, is Instrumental without the A. <laughs> Instrumental TL. Um, and uh, I think similar to Foundation Directory, uh, it has a lot. You can do project management. Um, you can move things from researching to plan to applying, et cetera, and then you can filter. Um, you can do uh, deadlines. It'll give you alerts for when things are due. Um, you can go in and say how much you were awarded. Um, you can leave notes for yourself, et cetera. So um, it is um, more funder friendly. So I think it would be maybe $3 signs. I'm not sure. And, um, but it, I still would give it five stars because it is just as agile as uh, candid or foundation directory. Um, okay. What I did is I went in and asked for the 14 day free trial. What they want to do is sit down with you. They're going to want to sit down with you for an hour, introduce you to instrumental, et cetera. They're trying to sell it, but to be able to get the free trial, you do that. Um, you don't get all the bells and whistles, so you can look at grants that are available. You can start projects, etc. cetera, but um, you can't download Excel, Excel spreadsheets. You can't um, download PDFs, etc. but you can search for some grant, some grant leads. And that's a 14 day free subscription. Um, here's a back end that a lot of grant consultants do. They hear about a foundation and I, I referred to this earlier. Um, you found a foundation, you found some foundations that you're interested in, that you've heard of. You go in and look at their 990. First of all, you scroll down a ways and make sure that the checkbox is not marked that says we do not fund uh, applications um, from uh, nonprofits that we haven't already pre-selected. So, and then you scroll all the way to the bottom and hopefully they're gonna have a nice little table and they're gonna show who they funded, the amount, and maybe even details of what kind of grant that they have, that they funded. And that gives you a really good idea of what, how much to request, because sometimes you'll see a grant range. You'll see, you know, they gave $5,000 to libraries. This is old school. This is what I did when I was looking for helping libraries um, hire interns in their libraries. I found a grant application. I found a funder um, and I went down and I saw that they had actually funded some libraries. And so that was a big hit for me. And then I saw how much they had funded them at. So I only asked for $10,000 as opposed to $40,000 because the other libraries had received $10,000. Mm -hmm. So I was modest um, in my request and it was proof. I think that's a good tip. Look and see what else the, these organizations have funded, um, both to see have they done libraries before so they that they are you know um, accepting of you and to get if they give a description of what the grant was um get an idea i'm like if you're not sure you know i want to get money for something but you don't even know what your project is yet <laughs> but you want to find someone that helps libraries do you want to do something you can get see what kind of things these organizations have approved so you can see what they are really um looking for possibly by seeing what they've actually funded Another fun thing that I've done is if you have community organizations that are doing great things, you might go to them and if they're if they're playing nice with their funders, they're going to advertise who's giving them support. So it actually might not just be uh, nonprofit organizations or um, foundations and also might be local businesses or corporations and they will say we are supported by so and so. So then you can go to those direct um, websites and have a lead that way. So um, I, I am working with, I'm working with a client that is looking for human services funding. So I went to some of their competition in town and I went in and was able to see who they had received, who some of their support came from. And then I went to those funders and looked at the grants that they offer. So, and, and also um, if you're, if, libraries play really nice with each other, okay? So if you know of a library, talk with your state agency that dis, did a successful capital improvement grant, they built a new library, they did capital improvement. You might reach out to them and ask them a lot of questions. They may even share their applications with you because they're done competing for funding. 
they've won their awards, they're done with their project, et cetera. So when I did a capital improvement grant, I found out about a couple of libraries in Nebraska that had already completed their projects, that had won their money, um, et cetera, and they shared their applications with me. They're happy to help. They want you to succeed. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, we here at the Library Commission, we have a grants database that um, all of um, any grants we give out are, are put in there so you can see what we've, um, who we funded and for um, generally the project descriptions are like a sentence or two so not an in-depth like here's their whole project just you know summary but at least you get an idea of what it was for and then yeah definitely contact them and say hey how did you do this can we yeah here are some more links and um, they're not hot links just so you know so um mm -hmm. They're here though, um, Grantsmanship Center, Council on Foundations. Um, I just discovered Cause IQ. Um, they do offer by state um, uh, foundations in the state that provide funding, but then you have to do a lot of legwork. Um, they also do um, more metro areas. Um, so some um, foundations will only provide grants in Lincoln. Some uh, foundations will only provide uh, grants to counties in western Nebraska, or somebody will provide in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, or even the entire county. So if you're not just looking to, you know, supply um, services to people just from Milwaukee, but you're hoping to bring in people that you haven't expanded to into the county that uh, Milwaukee is in, go ahead and apply to them because you're going to show them that you are expanding your programming and widening your geography, geographic. Mm -hmm. Um, grant writing support. So I love the University of Kansas Community Toolbox. It's amazing. They have one section on just applying for grants, but they are so much more. Um, they talk about community needs assessments, which is probably one of the first steps you might want to look at to demonstrating need. So go ahead and, and dig through all of that, but um, they do offer um, some specific tips and tricks for applying for grants. Um, the Grantsmanship Center, they offer a book that you could uh, that you could order. There's also grant writing for dummies. Nothing wrong with that one either. Um, but they do um, offer a page on getting the grant 101, but you can also look through to see what else they offer. Um, Candid Foundation does offer some things. Um, a lot of it's pay to play. You have to have your subscription. But if you go to their topics, some of them are free webinars, free tools. Just look um, mm -hmm. to see whether you have to have the subscription or not. They have upcoming webinars that you can attend. A lot of them are just introductory. Well worth your time. Um, ma management Library. I love Management Library. They may not necessarily talk about um, grant writing, but if you go into their strategic planning, they talk about writing goals, vision, mission. They may even get to some details about writing objectives and outcomes and program goals, um, et cetera. So that is also well worth your time. The first one is the new interface. The second one is the old interface and I'm old school. So I go to the one slash index.html because I know how to use it. <laughs> Okay, here we are at the end. Um, yes. we, we're about six minutes over. I do no want to a little late, so that's not a problem. <laughs> okay, I did yeah. want to provide my email address. Um, I am about empowering. Um, I work especially with small and burgeoning nonprofits, and I'm all about empowering them. So uh, I usually meet with somebody for an hour just to kind of get to know them and what their fundraising goals are, um, et cetera. Um, it's, and, and that sort of thing. So while I'm a paid consultant, uh, I have a soft spot in my heart for libraries. Um, and so if you want to send me, um, having worked at the Nebraska Library Commission and having worked at Hastings Public Library here in Nebraska, um, so I do have a soft spot in my heart for libraries. And so if you have some directed questions, you would like, you, you would like specificity or clarification on something that I provided to you today, just shoot me an email very responsive within one to two business days. Um, I'm happy to get back to you. Great. And awesome. so, yeah, there's thank a you. summary. There's a yeah. summary here. And then here's your post session survey. After <laughs> this session, how confident are you in your ability to prepare to write a grant? Yeah, so, go ahead. You know, type in the question section again to see what you think now. 
Um, and if you do have any other questions you want to ask of Catherine right now while we have her here, um, definitely type that into um, the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. Um, so let's see if anything new comes in. Uh, while um, you, you mentioned some of the resources, and I'm going to show something here in our Library Commission website once I see if any other uh, comments come in. So how confident are you now in, in uh, doing a so composing a grant? Um, go ahead and let us know in the questions. I am going to uh, pull the presenter control to my screen while we're waiting to see if anybody has anything. So if you do want to share with how you're feeling right now or um, any questions you want to ask of Catherine, definitely do so. And because I want to show you all there. Are you seeing my screen now? The Encompass Live website, Catherine? All right. Um, we have here at the Library Commission, and I'm going to pop over to this tab, which is our main Library Commission website. I maintain a website of um, about grants, and this is on our website, this flyout menu, which is for grants, funding, and E-rate. Um, and you can see, um, I talk about the funding recipients database. You can search here for any of the different grants we've done and see who's received them, libraries in Nebraska, and um, what they what the grant was um, our library commission related grants that we have as I said right now ours for 2024 are closed because we're giving my money out now but look in the fall but then down here grant opportunities for Nebraska libraries I share this link to people all the time because there are things that we don't um, cover here like I said like full-on construction projects we don't have the funding for that um, or if we don't have enough of a budget that's another thing I was going to mention in the beginning when you were talking uh, Catherine about figuring out um, Asking why you didn't get a grant, sometimes it's the budget limitations of the grant, um, the amount of money the grant uh, organization has. Like here at the Library Commission, our budgets, we never can fund everything that gets submitted to us. Even if they're all great <laughs> applications, we have had to just say no and strictly the only, it wasn't a bad grant application, it was a funding, a funding restriction on our side. We only get so much money from the federal government and so much money from the state for our grants and sometimes that is the only decision making is, well, we couldn't fund everybody because we ran out of money. <laughs> um, another thing, Krista, that you might mention is that sometimes you can partially fund, right? We do, so yes. So I in a letter of interest asked, and they wanted to know how much you were going for and we said $20,000 and they mm -hmm. got back to us and they said, okay, this part of your budget asked for $10,000. So ask for $10,000 for salaries, example. And yep. so um, we, we kind of have an idea that we're going to be partially funded. Um, and that's that's a great start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we do offer partial grant funding for everything. Well, except for our internship grants, those are a flat. You either get $500 or $1,000 to, to uh, pay a salary of an intern. But all of our other grants, we do do partial. So um, sometimes we have learned that if um, you get part of your fund of your a project funded by something like the state of Nebraska, then other grant issuing um, organizations are more willing to give you money as well because they see, oh, if the state of Nebraska thinks this is a worthwhile or worthy project, we should probably look more closely at this one and maybe help them, you know, get the rest of the money they need. We right. have had, definitely had that, yeah. uh, you know, connection help. And um, then um, I do want to mention that um, I, do, I can't speak for the Nebraska Library Association, but as a nonprofit, they may be um, more eligible to apply for some funding as opposed to government organizations. So yeah. you might reach out to the president, um, maybe if you or if you talk with your regional library, um, the regional library systems, they are mm -hmm. nonprofits as well. And if you can come together with several libraries in your library system, um, you might I, I can't speak for them. Um, but mm -hmm. they may actually apply for a grant on your behalf, knowing that they will funnel the money out to you. Yeah, and we do have someone who did comment. I was just looking at the questions here. Um, I'm much more confident than I was an hour ago, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, that's great to hear. That is great to hear. Again, yeah. I'm all about empowering. So um, as a grant consultant, if you want to send um, me a question, um, like, okay, how do I write an objective statement for this one thing so I can get you started and give you an idea of here's sure. what your objective statement would look like. Please just reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you. 
Definitely. Um, so this grant opportunities page that I maintain, it has, as you can see, our library commission grants, but I do list other opportunities for you as well. And I do, you will see things um, come uh, appear and remove from this page. Um, when um, certain things that have a deadline has passed, I take them off. So you may have seen something on here like a month ago that's no longer there. It's because the deadline passed, so I take it off. But the ones I do keep listed up here permanently, um, although here's one I've got, I said I've got some I've got updating. There are some that are like accepted and reviewed throughout the year, Humanities Nebraska. Um, deadlines vary from the Nebraska Arts Center. Um, some of these are open year round, as Catherine was saying, or could done. You, could you put the link in the messages? Could you put the link in the chat? Um, let's see here. I'm gonna paste there. For some reason, I can't see everybody. Why can't I? Um. Oh, maybe because I'm a presenter. Yeah, it's a little different um, for a presenter. Okay. Yeah, well, presenter, if, you can, yeah. if you can send me that link in an email, that'd be fabulous. Yeah, yeah. So it's our it's our website, Nebraska NLC Nebraska gov slash grants. We'll get you oh, here. Oh, well, that's easy. Pretty short. <laughs> um, but you see some of these are quarterly and they have certain dates. Um, some of these I have to update for the 2024 year um, throughout the year, throughout the year. So um, these kind of things I will keep there and I'll update as things change. So there's lots of really, um, um, like here's one coming up. The Pilcrow Foundation does um, children's books to rural public libraries. April 1st, they're coming up with a deadline for their, their first half of the year definitely look into that if you need books for your rural public library. And then I do have resources down here as well. Um, not as many as you had in yours um, as well, but um, the Nebraska Children and Families Foundation has a foundation research resource directory. So that's something libraries could use. Um, I use GrantStation a lot, which you mentioned, um, which I love. Um, it's, there is things that you, every time you get an email from that will promote, hey, sign up for, you know, us um, pay for it, but there's a free weekly newsletter letter of grant opportunities as well. So I use that a lot to keep an eye on things. Um, and then there's a specific library grants um, blog type thing that is um, posted things every now and then as well um, that you can use. So, um, and this is just, you know, grant opportunities for Nebraska libraries, but it's just a website. Anyone can go and look and see these, you know, some of these are obviously Nebraska centric, a lot of these here, but some are not. Um, here's someone mentioned the T-Mobile hometown grants. This is an ongoing um, program. And we have had libraries um, get those as well. Uh, all right. And what I'm going to do also after this today's session is done and the recording is available, I will be adding a link to it to my um, grant page here, maybe with the resources or something, so that people have this as a quick link. Um, all right. So does anybody have any other questions? I don't see anything new that came in. So I think since we're getting a little after almost at 11.15 here, we will um, wrap things up for today's show. Um, thank you so much for being here, Catherine. This is great. I'm so glad we were able to get you on the show to talk about oh this. Oh my gosh. Be here. It, was, it was just so happy. I'm so happy to be back. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. It's good to see you again. Yeah. Um, uh, grants, you know, it's one of the big things I do here at the commission. So it's near and dear to my heart. Um, I love giving away money, but it's not my money, <laughs> my personal money. <laughs> so anything we can do to help libraries get more um, funding, um, happy to do it. Um, and just be so, tenacious. Everybody just be tenacious. Um, be courageous, be courageous. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, sometimes I call myself a terrier. So I, I bite the ankle and I don't let go, even if they're trying to shake me off. So do not, you know, do not get up, give up. Do not be discouraged. Um, just keep on keeping on. Yeah. And, and think outside the box. You'll notice that it, you might see some things here or that come up that you wouldn't have thought of. But you've got to look for things like. 501c3s, your library foundation or your friends group can apply for things, things that are for government entities. If your library is a government department in your city, municipality, you fall under that. You know, think beyond. Don't just look for things that say library in them. Um, all right. So um, thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you, Catherine. Um, as I said, uh, the show is being recorded and we posted here. Um, these are our upcoming shows, um, but our archives are right here underneath here. And we have um, the most recent one will be at the top of the page. There is the last one that we did. We were off last week. We took a week off, but our most recent one was last the end of uh, February. Um, today's will be here. Everyone attended today's show and registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know um, when the recording is ready. Should be by the end of the day tomorrow at the very latest. Um, 
I will also push it out to, um, we have a Facebook page for Encompass Live. You see we do, our, here's a reminder to log in today's show, meet the presenter session, and then here is the announcement of last week, or the last show's recording. Um, we also post off to our Twitter and Instagram using the Encump Live hashtag, a little abbreviation. So you'll see it posted out there as well. Um, while we're here, I'll show you, you can search our show archives. You want to see if we've done a show on a particular topic. Um, you can do the whole archive. Right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to log off now. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you a lot, Catherine. So see you later. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Yeah, thank you. All right. Um, you can search our full show archives or just most recent 12 months if you want something really current. Um, this is because this is our full show archives. And if you see over here, there's a, a really small scroll bar because this is going back to when Encompass Live first premiered, which was in January 2009. Yes. So this is our 16th year woo of uh, Encompass Live. And we have all of our shows here. Um, this is something, you know, and so to just pay attention when you are watching a recorded show to the original broadcast date. They all have a date on here so you can um, see when it was originally done. Many of our shows will be fine and they'll stand the test of time and be great resources for you. Uh, but some things will become old and outdated um, databases or, or um websites or links or things may become um, broken, no longer work anymore. Uh, resources may have changed drastically or no longer exist. Uh, people may work at a totally different library organization than they did when they presented for us 10 years ago. So just pay attention to those original broadcast dates. But this is something that libraries do. We keep things for historical purposes, and we'll always do that as long as um, we have a place to host them, which right now all of our show archives are on the Library Commission's YouTube channel. So that wraps up for today's show. I hope you join us next week. Our topic is no more summertime blues, shaking up SRP, summer reading programs, to make it work for you. Um, this was a session that has actually been re was rescheduled. Uh, it was originally supposed to be part of our Big Talk from Small Libraries online conference, which was at the end of February. Yeah, the end of February. Uh, but the presenter was unable to present at the last minute. So we got her rescheduled to come on to Encompass Live instead. Um, and this was also originally a, in the conference, a 10 minute lightning round session, but she's expanding it to fill our full hour. So you get even more uh, from her. So Chelsea Price, who's uh, going to be joining us from um, her public library in Iowa, will be talking about. Um, things that you can do for your summer reading program, which I know libraries are, um, it's coming up soon. <laughs> uh, so if you haven't prepared um, yet, you want to get some new tips and tricks for that, definitely sign up for next week's show. Um, because you've got some of our other shows here coming up, uh, filling in on the schedule as well. So um, thank you everybody, everyone, everyone for being here. Um, and hopefully we'll see you on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye.